What's the hardest thing to do in Overwatch? It's stopping myself from punching a hole through my monitor when I get a Widowmaker in my lobby. But maybe that's just a me problem. In today's video, we'll be looking at the hardest things to do in Overwatch, from achievements to mechanics and more. I've saved the hardest thing for last and I can almost guarantee none of you have done it before. Overwatch has its own achievements and when you complete them, you get sprays. The ones you'll commonly see are the cute and pixel sprays for each hero. For these, you have to complete some task on the hero, like killing an enemy with Brigada's Shield Bash, or killing four enemies with a single use of Soldier's Tack Visor. Sounds pretty easy, right? Wrong. These achievements are not created equal, and some of them are way harder to get than others. The most egregious ones are probably Baptistes, Zenyatas, and Reapers. We don't have stats for Battle.net and there is no universal database of this information so I'm having to work with the data I've got here, the Steam achievements. Let's start with the least achieved achievement. Just 0.3% of people have this achievement. Window of Opportunity. Amplify 2000 combined damage and healing without dying as Baptiste in quick or competitive play. This doesn't seem that hard to do, but I checked my profile and I don't have it, and neither do any of my friends. Not that any of us play Baptiste a lot, but still, you'd think this was something you'd get easily accidentally. That's the least achieved uh, achievement on Steam for a hero. The next few are all limited time events until you get to Sojourn. Soja's on the move, kill an enemy with a charged railgun headshot while sliding in quick or competitive play achievement has a measly 1.1% completion rate. Now I'd chalk that up to her being a rather unpopular character amongst casual players and her being a newer addition to the cast, but her railgun and power slide are things you would think get used in tandem all the time. The next least achieved achievement belongs to Junker Queen. Adrenaline Junkie. Have seven of Junker Queen's wounds active on enemies at the same time in quick or competitive play. There's only five enemies, so I don't even know how you would do this. I'm just kidding. Uh, each ability besides Shout causes a wound, so if you hit five enemies with an ult and swung Carnage on two of them, you'd get the achievement. While this one is somewhat hard to do, I'm also going to chalk this one up to JQ being a newer hero. And I do have this one, so that's pretty cool. Okay, there are rarer achievements than these next two, but these are the old OG achievements that longtime players will recognize as some of the hardest things to do in Overwatch. Zenyatta's Rapid Discord, get four kills or assist with Zenyatta's Orb of Discord within six seconds in quick or competitive play, has a 1.9% achievement rate. And Reaper's Waste Not Want Not, Get three solo kills with a single clip of Reaper shotguns in quick or competitive play has a 2% completion rate. These are universally understood to be difficult achievements in the Overwatch community. They have a very small margin for error, and if you see someone with these, put some respect on their name, with one caveat. All of these hero achievements are actually really easy to get. I've seen many people in comp lobbies once a few people have left the match just sort of hang out and help each other get achievements. Don't these people know it's about the journey, not the destination, man? At the time of writing this, we're in Season 12. Juno has been added to the hero roster and ranks have been reset. The competitive leaderboards aren't up yet, however, in Season 11, not a single person made it to champion on the combined leaderboard, which is the average of your ranks across every role and requires you to win at least 25 games on each role. Playing that much comp is enough to send you into a depression spiral. Am I right or am I right? But then to do that and get each role into champion, that's another level of skill and mental. Getting into Grandmaster already puts you in around the top 350 people for the role, at least in NA. To get into champion is insane. There was one person, one person who made it into combined champion in season 10, Lucamino. That's a crazy achievement. I almost put getting into champion on this list, but combined champion is an even more difficult achievement. You have to be an expert in every single role, know the ins and outs of pretty much every hero, essentially be God's gift to Overwatch. It is a true accomplishment. For most people, it's probably pretty close to impossible. I'm sure there are more players who could have reached combined champion, but they just didn't want to dedicate themselves to that goal. And that's the part that really sucks about this and most video games. After hundreds of hours of grinding, learning, and practicing, you tell your parents you finally did it. You finally made it to combined champion. And do they get you flowers, a card, a personalized plaque to commemorate this moment? No. They just hand you a job application. 
I know I said I'd save the hardest thing for last, but man, is this a strong contender. Few things in Overwatch are so hard they go beyond the game and into your real life. Living with yourself after playing Sombra is one of the hardest things you can do. How do you sick people do it? Do you enjoy watching others suffer? Seeing others in pain? Get help. But before you do, it would mean the world to me if you would consider subscribing. I want nothing more than to be a full-time content creator and your support would really help me make that happen. Then I can make more awesome videos just like this, start streaming, and do other fun things for this awesome community that we're building. We crushed our goal of hitting 10k subs by the end of August and I'm hoping we can hit 15k by the end of this month. Thanks for helping me realize my dreams and back to the video. Getting to the point first can be a huge advantage from letting you and your team get to the best position to even securing environmental kills. But how can you make sure that you always get to the point first? Rollouts. Characters like Doomfist, Wrecking Ball, and Lucio have specialized paths and ability combos and interactions with terrain that allow them to come out of spawn extremely quickly. However, these rollouts can be pretty difficult to pull off and they require practice to get right consistently. The time spent to learn them can be worth it though. Like I said, getting to the point first is often a huge advantage. This Lucio rollout is especially lethal. Learning something like this isn't going to take you from silver to plat, and to be honest, you have to be pretty good at your hero to pull these off anyway, but if you're looking for another way to get an edge in a match, rollouts are a great way to do it. Speaking of being pretty good at a hero, getting 5 stars on the hardest difficulty in the hero mastery courses is certainly hard but not impossible with some practice. Okay, maybe a lot of practice. There are people much better at Overwatch than me who have found the perfect routes for each of these courses. With some time and effort, you can learn the paths, the timing to complete these, but as more of these get added, the challenge will only get harder. At some point, you'll be required to become an expert at piloting each and every hero. That's no easy task, and then to do it under the pressure of a ticking clock? Not easy. One might even say hard. One might even go so far as to say it's one of the hardest things you can do in Overwatch. Genji is one of the hardest heroes in the game, but why? While he does require you to be good at pretty much every aspect of Overwatch and you're often one mistake away from the spawn room, that's not the reason I bring him up. No, Genji actually has an advanced technique that is one of the most difficult things to use in Overwatch. See, when you participate in an elim as Genji, regardless of how it happens, your Swift Strike is reset. And while you probably already knew that, you might not know that Swift Strike can be immediately animation cancelled into another Swift Strike, just like this. This is called a ghost dash. Now, ghost dashing isn't actually that hard to do. If you play Genji enough, you'll accidentally do it by spamming the shift key. However, to use this in a game, on purpose, and to great effect, can feel almost impossible. While I'm talking, you'll see a montage of people pulling this off. It's insane, and also extremely fun. Chaining together multiple ghost dashes is exhilarating. Genji has other combos and animation cancels he can do, but when people think of expert level OW mechanics, Ghost Dash is probably at the top of the list. If you're a Genji enthusiast and you want to try this out, there are special workshop codes you can use to practice it. If you're looking at this and saying, that can't be that hard, just try it. Doing it in a real game is a whole other story. I mean, you have to not only recognize the opportunity of two enemies below the kill threshold in front of you, but then also execute. It's flashy, it's sick, it's extremely fun, and it's one of the hardest things to do in Overwatch. Before we move on to the rest of the list, I want to go over a few things that are difficult to do in Overwatch but don't quite make the list of the hardest things to do. Playing certain heroes in general. While this video isn't about the hardest heroes to play, Genji, Tracer, Doom, Widow, Ball, and Lucio are all some of the hardest heroes to play. Reaching anything diamond and above will put you significantly above the average player, so I'd say that's pretty hard to do. Not smashing your keyboard in half after your Moira player has 10k damage and 2k healing is pretty impossible. Any sort of extended win streak is quite impressive and difficult to pull off. While anyone can get to bronze, and no offense for what I'm about to say, I love all of my bronze viewers, but if you're in bronze naturally, it's quite hard to be that bad. Reaching the max progression level on a single hero or account wide requires a ton of playtime. Not watching every one of my videos is super hard to do. Because there's one less player on the enemy team now, getting 50 plus elim games is difficult to do. Not only do you have to participate in nearly every kill, the game also has to be pretty long. Playing tank, like at all, 
you have the weight of the world on your shoulders and everyone blames you when things go wrong. Okay, and that's the bonus round of things that didn't quite make the actual list. It's widely agreed upon that Tracer is the most difficult hero in Overwatch. She has the lowest health in the game, one mistake will often result in death, she is mechanically demanding and requires top tier game sense. But I want to narrow in on one specific part of Tracer, the 180s. Tracer can blink, teleporting a short distance. If you turn completely around during the blink animation, you can effectively go from in front of someone to instantly shooting them in the back. This is incredibly powerful and can be combined with melees or pulse bombs to devastating effect. A blink melee isn't crazy difficult, a blink 180 melee is pretty hard, a blink 180 pulse bomb is next level. You can't see these clips and not recognize how disgusting this is. Again, this is one of those things you can try if you don't think it's hard, and speaking of things that look deceptively easy, there's a technique that Winston's ultimate has that is insanely hard but looks effortless. Primal Juggles. With Winston's ult, he gains a ton of health, can leap, and melee people. When he melees, he does a lot of knockback. You can use this to continuously juggle someone, pretty much guaranteeing a kill. In these clips, it looks easy, but the part you don't see is just how unpredictable this knockback can be. It's one of the more advanced things you can do on a hero in Overwatch. It takes significant skill and practice to execute, and then you have to pull it off in the insane number of situations you'll find yourself in while accounting for all of the movement abilities characters have in this game. You're in the middle of a war zone, and you have to keep a balloon from touching the ground. Easier said than done. Though, if you can learn this tech, it makes Winston's primal way more threatening. Being able to lock someone in the corner and punch them to death all while having a thousand health sounds pretty strong to me. Listen, I hate, and I mean hate, Widowmaker, but there's no denying she requires a tremendous amount of skill to play. The accuracy she requires in both aiming and positioning is insane. But why not throw trick shots into the mix to make things even harder? You can use Widow's Grapple to perform hook shots, jump shots, grapple shots, whatever you want to call it. You can grapple to a surface and jump to detach the grapple. This will launch you into the air, giving you enough time to scope in, charge a shot, and get a pick. This is stupid hard. Like anything, you can get better with practice. Landing shots on Widow is hard enough without flying through the air though. And if you want to take things to the next level, why not throw a 360 in there too? Grapple, 360, kill. It's just a shame you can't flashbang YY no scope too. If you get good at jump shots, this can actually be very useful. There are a ton of spots that you can use this to peak angles the enemy wouldn't really expect. Even if you don't hit your shots, just pressuring these angles can make the enemy sweat. So unlike pretty much everything else on this list, you don't even have to execute to get the value. While Mercy is a beginner-friendly hero, that doesn't mean she is necessarily easy or skillless. In fact, she has one of the more difficult mechanics in the game. Mercy can use her Guardian Angel, her movement ability, to do some pretty crazy moves. I'm sure you've witnessed a Mercy who's just flying around all over the place and nearly impossible to hit. While a lot of this movement is easily accessible, some of the tech you can do definitely requires practice to pull off. There are insane super jump res techs that you're seeing right now that make res very unpredictable, which is normally its one drawback. Mercy is standing pretty still for a sec while she reses. But with these techs, you can abuse Mercy's movement to launch into the air, launch backwards, and other tricky things that make you harder to kill. And again, it's easier to do something like this in the practice range. But to do it in-game, under pressure, while the entire enemy team is trying to kill you and only you, it's another level of difficulty, and that's why it made the list. While everything we've talked about so far has been directly related to gameplay, the hardest thing to do in Overwatch actually has way more to do with your wallet than your skills in game. The hardest thing to do in Overwatch is to own every single cosmetic. This goes way beyond just being rich or spending your retirement fund on Overwatch. Not only would you have to buy every single shop skin, earn or buy every single battle pass skin, you would have to reach the highest rank in every single role, every single season, complete every achievement, which also means owning the story missions, you'd have to buy an absurd number of Overwatch League tokens to buy every single team cosmetic, and all of the Overwatch League exclusive cosmetics. There are cosmetics you can only get by attending in-person events like BlizzCon and Overwatch Esports. There are cosmetics you can only get from drops on YouTube and Twitch. The charity skins, limited time events, and more, 
Between the skins, sprays, emotes, poses, voice lines, profile pictures, name cards, titles, charms, highlight intros, I mean, it just seems truly impossible that there is even one person who has legitimately earned, bought, or received and owns every single cosmetic in the game. And there's things I haven't even mentioned, like progression levels on the heroes and hero mastery missions. There are over 4,000 cosmetics in Overwatch, and that's an outdated number. Who knows how many there are now? It's too many to even think about. So to sum it all up, not only would you have to be a god at Overwatch and consistently have been one on every role for every season, you would have needed to travel or spend ridiculous sums to get IRL event exclusive cosmetics. You would have to watch every drop stream and a ton of other things. Words cannot do this challenge justice. I can't think of anything harder to do in Overwatch than own every single cosmetic. But there's nothing easier than hitting that subscribe button. I'm so thankful for your support and helping me realize my dream to become a full-time content creator. If you like this video and would like to learn more about the history of Overwatch, click here to learn about every feature deleted from Overwatch. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in-game.